Something good is going to happen to me. I love sitting at your feet. I love hearing every word you say. I love knowing all your desires. I'm so pleasure to obey. Your faith is like the sunrise driving all my nights away. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit, every single day. I love sitting at your feet. Success talk. I didn't think I'd be here at 5 o'clock. I said earlier that we wouldn't. I had so many things on the agenda, didn't see how we could. But I was able to get someone else to do this and someone else to do that and someone else take the books here and someone else delegation cleanses, unclutters your life when you have the right people in your world, your circle. I'm going to go down a list here of things that I think are just comments. Success world A through Z. Success world A through Z. Pastor Anna is going to join me, I think, here. Are you there, lady? Yes, Dr. Murdoch, I'm here. Yeah. It's so good to see you. You're wearing the same clothes, too, huh? Yes, sir. We, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have time to change, did we? No, Dr. Murdoch. Julie's here, yay. I want to talk about success world, A through Z. And it's just some commentary on various topics. But I think just commentaries on some words. A friend of mine who was real famous motivator Kathy Alls, I doubt it. I don't know if Kathy's still alive, but she used to say, success is joy. Mm -hmm. You know you're a success on the earth when you have joy. I thought that's the best I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Scripture says in his presence, his fullness of joy, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Paul J. Meyer, who founded SMI, Success Motivation Institute in Waco, Texas, said success is the obtaining of a worthwhile goal. First thing you have to do in your life is, what is success to you? It's only said it's only mentioned in the Bible one time in the first chapter of Joshua. It says the key to success was to not look to the right or to the left, but to stay focused on the divine word of God, the Bible. That was the key to success. The successor, the protege under Moses, wrote those words. Joshua. I'm going to go down some words, and uh, I'll try to stay alphabetical just to give you commentary. D 
this is not alphabetical. I just saw that there's, they're all jumped. I never got them alphabetized, but I'm going to start. Archives. That's where you collect the history of your decisions, your notes, your thoughts. There must be a room in your house where you have filing cabinets, things that are important and retrievability. The best book I ever read for organizing your world is called File, F-I-L-E, Don't Pile, written by a librarian. Librarian, and I grabbed that and I implemented that system. Organizing is everything. Saves time, retrievability, money. Means everything has a place. I'll tell you someday how I lost $100,000 just because it wasn't placed in the right place in my, when it came back from a trip. Archives is the history. It's a collection of what you want to say. Some things have a lifespan for a minute, a moment. I think flies last, was it three days? I think flies last three days. Some things last a lifetime. Apologizing. The wise man's secret for restoring wounded relationships. Apologies should be swift, quick, real, and short. I had an experience with the famous leader of a TV ministry, and uh, he wanted me to go to India. 35 million people, he said, I think he said. They watched his TV program there. And he wanted me to raise support for him in India and teach on his program. And I was thrilled and excited about that. I says, I really ask one favor. I said, don't ask for any money. Don't ask for anything. But don't put me in, in the coach. I need first class to, to fly that far at my age. I can't have kids in front of me spitting at me, making fun through the night. I can't have people in the back seat behind me kicking. Just give me a first class seat's all I ask. And he got mad. Got real mad. And he came with his uh, vice president. I'd raised him a lot, of, a lot of money for his ministry before. And he had asked me to be the only one. Would I please sign a contract with him and not help anybody else? Don't help the Cirillos. Don't help the old Roberts. Don't help anybody else. Just help him. He said, I need a friend when I come to America. I said, I'll be your friend. I don't make a good slave. I don't, I don't do well on slavery. <laughs> he got mad. He said, I can't believe you with 35 million people in India waiting to hear you teach and you would Asked for a first class ticket on a plane. I said, I can't believe that you would stop 35 million people from hearing the gospel because you want me to sit in the back of a plane. Yes. <laughs> I have a volatile part of me. It's an absolute miracle I'm not in prison today. It's an absolute miracle. An absolute miracle. The next day, I'm driving down the road, and I realized I talked to a great man of God like that. I had kind of upset him, but I was upset. I never worry about anybody's anger except mine. That's the only one I worry about. I don't worry about anybody on the earth getting mad at me. What I hope is I don't get mad at them. That's, that's the danger zone. I can handle anybody's anger. But my own is, is stressful. I don't care who gets mad at me. A 
Boy, if I get mad, we're going to have a problem. It's going to be World War 14. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle I work real hard about my anger. So I was driving down the road. I says, I shouldn't have talked to a man of God like that. I shouldn't have done it. I was wrong. He was an idiot, but I was the worst idiot because I, I gave the idiot my attention. <laughs> wow. I gave him my focus. Hmm. I called him on the phone. I said, brother, I was dead wrong. I am so, so sorry. I talked like that to you in front of your vice president, in front of I, I was wrong. And he apologized back. He says, no, I was the one that was wrong. You was right. I says, no, I, I have no business talking to a man of God like that. An apology needs to be sincere, quick, not elaborate. And don't say, the reason I said that was this. The reason I, do, don't, don't, don't try to explain jackass behavior. Don't, don't do it to it. <laughs> don't do it. You're a donkey or you're not. Just don't try to explain it. Just apologize for it. Yes. Next is anniversaries. Celebrate everything. Mike Reed told me about his father, Charles Reed, who had a TV station, West Monroe. I went there twice a year. He said, Daddy celebrates everything. The purpose of celebration is to show difference and to create a memory. Mm. Celebrate everything you can. Fourth month of your marriage, fifth month of your marriage, sixth month of your marriage. Make birthdays, stretch them out. Isn't that something? Your mama carried you nine months and had you one day, and they want you to celebrate all of that one day. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yes. Have, have birthday weeks. This is my birthday week. Mm -hmm. Anniversaries are important. They're really valuable. Birthdays, celebrations, we'll come to that. But put that down. If possible. The top 120 people in your life, if not the top 12, try to document their anniversary. We talked about your your birthday's coming up. Miss Sonia, yes. be 49. <laughs> I think I made a mistake. But her birthday's coming up. Me and Miss Christina. Christina was talking to me last night. I'm trying to go to bed. And she says, what can we do? For Sonia's birthday. <laughs> I suggest that we give her a picture of India, where she came from. Just give her a picture of India and say, I want you to know that the country you came from is still extremely ignorant in God things. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> we have, we've already got a plan. we got a plan. That's a, you, you'll like it. You'll like it. I think it'd be good if you had an anniversary calendar, a birthday. We call it celebration calendar. Somewhere on your yes. wall. Don't miss somebody's birthday if possible. Somebody's anniversary. You can buy a candle, buy a card. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it's important. Accuracy. Do it right. Say it right. Double check everything. Never, 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 never accept what somebody says as facts. Never. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let my word be established. That's big. I heard today that there was 500,000 people without food in Fort Worth every day. Did you hear that? No, Dr. Martin. Half a million, 500,000. Wow. So yeah. I asked Siri how many people lived in Fort Worth. 998,000. You yeah. can never make me believe that 50% of all the people in Fort Worth go to bed hungry every night. 
But I had to verify that. I had to verify it. Verify everything. Accuracy. FYI, the Titanic did not merely sink because of an iceberg and the 1,600 people drowned. The Titanic was said the ship that cannot sink. It was considered the greatest building of ship that had ever taken place in the world. But a man made a mistake in locking up the key. The Titanic sunk because of inaccuracy. Many planes have crashed because something wasn't correct. Everywhere there's a human, there's a mistake. Everywhere a human happens, a mistake is born, created. Mm -hmm. Accept that, work with that, and slow everything down to the speed of accuracy. Follow the rules. When you drive on a freeway, follow the rules. Don't go 80 in a 60 mile an hour zone. Follow the rules. The purpose of the rules is protection, safety, accuracy. You ever quoted a scripture wrong? Somebody came back and said, it. well, what the Bible really said was, oh, that's right. Once you are experienced as an inaccurate person, nobody believes anything else you say from their own. Accuracy. Accuracy, most of the time, is normal. Sometimes it's a customized opinion. When I went to sell the Wisdom Center to a pastor, I really liked him. I decided I was going to give him two homes, not expensive homes, about three fifty dollars apiece, three fifty, dollars about about seven hundred thousand dollars worth of my two homes by the Wisdom Center, a block away. It was unique because it was the last wall permitted in Haltom City. The uh, city hall had a meeting, and they said, "This is the last time we let anybody have a wall." Because I love walls around my building, my homes. Spent a lot of money on those. Swimming pool. Jacuzzi, waterfalls, and the houses were like this with a beautiful big yard between them. It was a, like a like a commune. Four lawyers and a preacher reviewed all the contracts. Came back, it's here. Plus all their lawyers. That's on my side, had four lawyers and a preacher. On their side, they had some more lawyers. And when I started reading the contract, it had two words I didn't understand. Wisdom key. Never permit a word to go undiscerned. Unknown. The moment anybody in the world says a word you don't understand, stop it. Say, I don't know what you just said. Say it again and tell me what it means. What happened? You know what the words, two words in the contract meant? That the preacher would not only get a $10 million building for $8 million with no interest, no interest. Year after year after year, I would never charge him a penny interest. I was going to give him two extra houses. I was going to do this. You know what he had in the contract? He would own every book I had ever written. He would own every song I had ever written. He would own everything I'd ever produced with my life. They had squeezed that in in two weird words I'd never heard of in the contract. But I stopped it. The moment somebody's not accurate, stop it and say, are we sure? Now, now don't, 
don't say, I disagree, or you're crazy, or what's right, or, you know. Just simply speak up and say, I don't. I don't really understand that fully. Walk me through it again. Clarify that for me. Does that mean this? The moment confusion enters, confusion is the evidence of a crook that's present. There's no confusion about truth. Truth is easy. It's simple. It's the snake man. It's the snake man that grins big as he introduces a trap. Assignment. Everything created solves a problem. Your eyes see, your ears hear, your hands reach, your feet walk, your mouth speaks. Lawyers solve legal problems, mothers solve emotional problems. Preachers solve spiritual problems. Doctors solve medical problems. Everything created produced pleasure for God according to Revelation 4.11. What is your assignment? I've written a thousand pages on it. Nobody, nobody can compare with the revelation God's given me on the assignment. Nobody. I've read it. It's powerful. An assignment is a problem you were designed by God to solve on the earth. I'm never mad at my mouth because it just refuses to hear anything. <laughs> I don't grab my ear and twist it on you little. What's wrong with you? Can't you talk? <laughs> Big enough to be a mouth. What's wrong with you? No. It's not its assignment. Your assignment's geographical. Your assignment's to a place. Your assignment's always to a person or a group of people with a problem. Your assignment's to solve a problem. Your assignment's to make a change and improve. Your assignment is the only place God guarantee your financial provision. 1 Kings 17. The bird comes, feeds brother Elijah. One day it didn't show up. Brook dried up. The assignment had changed. Now walk 85 miles to from Sharif to a widow in Zarephath. And that's where your provision is. Money is anywhere God wants you to be. Money is anywhere God wants you to be. Money is a divine confirmation that God can be directing you. God can be leading you. Money is a reward system. Your assignment must become your obsession. Your assignment has 14 seasons. Go read that in the book called The Law of Recognition. Next, anxiety. Anxiety is stress from ignored instructions. Anxiety is unspeakable stress from bad experiences with people. Anxiety is when you're overloaded. Anxiety is when you have no peace because of distrust. I talked to a doctor today, good man, nice man, who I was talking to about my situation. He's been with me for a couple of years, maybe. And I told him what I was experiencing. And I said, I noticed that if somebody ignores me, ignores me, or tries to get in my face, or try to I said, I become volatile. We were talking about anxiety. It's very real. I never had it before in my life till now. But I noticed that it's not God's way. It's not God's plan. God wants us in peace. Is there anybody here that's uh, going through anxiety over anything? Let me know right now. Brazil is here, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa. Dale is here. Dale, I'm so sorry I couldn't uh, 
take time last night, just so you know. I was barely, I barely made the message, barely made the service, and I was trying to get a, a loan where I could catch my breath yesterday on Mother's Day. Renee Poole, Carolyn Carson. Connecting from Centurion in Pretoria, South Africa. Kewara, Nigeria. Ega, E-G-A. My name is Emmanuel, and I'm from Houston, Texas. I lived there five years, Emmanuel. I know Houston like the palm of my hand. Preached a lot in, preached a lot in Houston. Thomas Mann, love you, Thomas. Hope you're okay. Haven't seen you in a good while. A prophet of the Lord, I believe. Apostle Sonia, I looked at your brochure, making some plans. I won't ever preach in the world. But it's worth a dime to get to know you. I'm so glad I get to hear this timeless, priceless wisdom today. I've heard so much of these teachings that no one else is saying. My life has changed and changing. Apostle Sonia, I love your authority. I love your strength. And uh, you're a remarkable, exceptional partner of my life. Sheila Parsley says, I'm going through a lot of anxiety right now. Sheila, I, I want to pray, because I am too. It's been ferocious, even today. It's been rough for me. Sheila, I don't know answers right now. I know it's anxiety scares God. He gets away from him as far as he can, it looks like. He doesn't get close. But I want to just say this. Nobody can feel your anxiety, and it's indescribable. What you go through in your emotions and your mind, it's indescribable. But I'd like to say this. Try to simplify your world when you can. Don't get around everybody. Diminish the access you give to others. And uh, Sheila, identify whose voice affects you. You don't know why it does. There's looks on people's face. There's hairstyle on men. <laughs> they just, <laughs> it's like a, they just, I just sit there and I look at, at hairstyle sticking 75,000 hairs sticking up toward the Mars and some going toward Pluto. And I'm thinking, Ooh, ooh, I wonder if they'll ever call me. I wonder if they'll ever, I wonder if they'll ever cut it. Can't say anything, because then you're a critical person. But stay away from people whose presence brings anxiety. You don't have to know why. You don't have to explain why. I can't listen to worship music anymore. Isn't that something? Me with all the worship music. I can't listen to it. it. It bothers me. I can't watch boxing. I can't watch games, basketball, because of the, I just can't. But get away from what brings anxiety. Don't try to force yourself. That's just for you. Father, I pray for Sheila, who's been in my world a long time. She cares about my ministry. She supported me. She prays for me. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I curse the spirit of anxiety and any declarations of witchcraft that occurred. I cast it back and we receive the peace of Jesus. We receive the calmness of Jesus for the glory of God right now. So be it. So be it. I'm live. Those that are in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm live. It's 530 Monday night, May the 9th. Pastor Anna's with me. Pastor Anna, you have any thoughts on anxiety? I know you've never had any, but should you ever experience any? Have you ever had any? I have not, Dr. Murdoch, I don't think. But something that I've learned from you, Dr. Murdoch, going through the storms of your life is how important it is to show caring. I love when you say, Dr. Murdoch, that you look for the sound of caring in a preacher's voice. And we make so many mistakes in our attempt to bring faith or to motivate people that we uh, play it down. And that's the worst we can do. I believe that. I love the bridge words that you've taught us, Dr. Murdoch, how to approach, how to pray. I love when you said prayers. 
should be short. When we pray for someone that is going through all of those storms. Yes. So I'm, I'm thankful for your teaching, Dr. Murdoch. Sheila, change your goals. Get a simple goal instead. Try to change your goals. If you can, if you can. I'm not able to read a lot. I can't read contracts. I have to have them read for me. But uh, don't run away from this moment. Find an answer and look for an answer. Cindy Jones? Wow. That's interesting. Cindy, I didn't know that. She says, quote, I have anxiety. I flew in the face of it when I drove to the Wisdom Center for your birthday. It's worth every difficult moment. Made me so much stronger. Love that. Christina Roby says, I know a lot about anxiety. Yvonne Fox says, I suffer from social anxiety. Yvonne, two days ago, three days ago, I told Christina, I can never go to a restaurant again. I can't go to any restaurant. I can't bear it. The music, everything's not right. Anxiety is a reaction to an environment, reaction to a countenance, reaction to a memory. And I've been reading what people say about anxiety, and I don't think they have it. I don't think they have the slightest idea of what it's all about. I don't think what I've read about anxiety is so foreign from what I'm experiencing. So I'll mention this. Ezekiel from Nigeria says. Every day, we go through a lot here in Nigeria. Well, you got crooked leaders, Ezekiel, you know that. You've always had crooked leaders there. Fortunately, you have extraordinary pastors in Nigeria. The most profound men I've ever met are in Nigeria. Ezekiel, so many things I could say because Nigeria is my favorite nation to preach, but I really hope, I don't know where you are in Nigeria, but Ezekiel, there's some profound preachers there, strong, tough, men of God, don't have a stingy bone in them, they're real rare, get close to a preacher, get close to a preacher who prays, who prays with expectation, get close to a preacher who invests time and giving you scriptural principles and keys. Louisville, Kentucky. Yay. Karen Renee. I'm very sensitive. I can't hand, handle any kind of sounds at all. Karen, any kind of sounds. Just just a bottle in another room, just a crack. I had a uh, a water bottle today. And when I, you know how they shrink in and the sound is just unbearable to me. Now, in the name of Jesus, I release a healing, a restoration, and a peace to every person. Lord, we really need you. We can't live without you. We're wounded, we're broken, and we're trying to get okay. We call on the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Calvary over our bodies, our emotions, our lives. We plead your blood over us, our family, our home, and especially show us how to cleanse our environment of sounds that wound us, especially our thoughts. Father, I fight a lot of bad thoughts, thoughts about bad people, people I don't trust anymore, and it affects me. And over and over I've told you I forgive them. I release them to you. I ask you to cleanse them, purge their life. I don't ask you to restore our relationship. I ask you to heal from the relationship. Amen and amen. Bishop McIntyre just celebrated 67 years of marriage, and I love the way they look at each other. Tamara White, Canada. Tamara, you're faithful. You're consistent. Amen.
Teen, I've got a lot. Let me go through. Adaptation means you give up something so someone else will be okay. Joseph shaved his beard because Egyptians hated beards when he entered the hall of the palace of Pharaoh. Adaptation is the seed for longevity in relationships. I've spent my whole life adapting, my entire world. My 76 years have been adaptation. Church to church, different pastor, different environment, different culture. Go from Brazil to Portuguese, over to Germany for German, then go to Spain for Spanish, fly and preach in Brazil in French, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Adaptation is proof of honor. Adaptation is the seed for relationship. Today, Christina, my wife, who speaks Portuguese, English, and some Spanish, she said a word, and I corrected and I said, baby, this word means this, and this word means that. And we started laughing. And uh, I don't have a brain close to her size. What's the most important successful key in marriage? Marry somebody with a brain because you ain't got one. <laughs> What's humility? Accepting the fact that you're brainless and you need other people around you. That's it. But adaptation means you, you try to see what's needed. I've had to adapt. I'm a two-hour preacher. I pour out everything for a transcript that turned into a book. And uh, everybody wants 22-minute sermons. So I've had to adapt to that around the world. I've flown 16 hours to have them tell me I could only speak for 40 minutes. Then I sit there and watch their dancers wiggle all across the platform for Jesus. <laughs> and as I watch them wiggle for Jesus, then I had some other singers. Singers been in the church for 40 years. They wanted them to sing for 40 minutes. I sit there and sit there and sit there. Adaptation is an investment in relationship. Adapt if you can. Adapt when somebody wants to do all the talking. Adapt when somebody just stares at you and silent. Adapt to who people are. Not what you wish they would be. Adapt. Agreement. Boy, agreement's a powerful word. Pastor Anna, what's your word on agreement? Dr. Murdoch, I believe that agreement is what qualifies us for relationship, not only love, but agreement. Like when the Bible says that two must agree to walk together, and sometimes we feel that it's love, but a lot of people that love each other end up in divorce because they could not come into agreement. Three things are needed for agreement. Same experiences, admiration of your survival and overcoming, and three, information. If you don't have my experiences, you're not going to have my persuasion. You almost have to have my experiences for us to be have the same persuasion. Agreement is not a decision. I can't decide to agree. I can't do that. I have to hear information that confirms accuracy of what you're saying. Wow. I have a preacher friend of mine that I love. He hates the phrase seeking God. He hates it. And he preaches for hours and hours, everywhere. He preaches that. You don't seek God. He's inside you. You don't seek God. Well, there's a guy that hasn't read the dictionary, obviously. He don't even know what seek means. Do I like him? Love him. Good looking. He's an evangelist. He came to the Wisdom Center. I paid him a lot of money to tell my church, Stop seeking God. 
He's already inside you. Now, I don't stop everybody who's wrong because I got a, a life to live. I got things to do. Agreement requires definition of words, context. When you want to get into agreement with somebody, there has to be conversation, elaborate conversation. Now, some things don't matter. Well, I really like this blue carpet, don't you, honey? Well, baby, really, I like gold and black myself. But if you want blue, baby, baby, that's what you get, baby. You want blue? There's an old saying, happy wife creates a happy life. <laughs> yes. The word, admiration. Admire people who achieve. Find something to admire in everyone. Find something to admire in everybody. There's something good there. Find something to admire. It may take an hour of questioning. Find what they overcame. Find the struggles they won over. Admiration is the seed for becoming. I admired Oral Roberts. I admired Jim Baker. I admired Jimmy Swagger. Still do. Find something to admire in someone you need to get along with. They may have a weakness that's poisonous as a rattlesnake. They may have an agitation that creates anxiety. But try to find something to admire. I don't agree with President Joe Biden on killing babies and all that. He really, he's really sold on killing little babies, which is dangerous because he certainly is anti-Psalms 127.3. Children are the heritage of the Lord. Nobody who believes in abortion believes that children are from God. They believe they're from the devil. And that's not. But I keep looking to find something Look what he became. Joe Biden became the president of the United States of America while he still believed in killing babies. And his vice president, she's uh, ferocious about it. She, uh, if you ever hear her talking about it, she, uh, she almost is excited about killing babies. I mean, actually, she is. But you find something good about the people around you. Admiration. What is there to admire? You want to put the book on the screen? Uh, see if you can put the wisdom book. There's two or three people that's going to become new monthly partners, the wisdom Bible. I want to give you every person who becomes a monthly partner for the next 12 months. I want to give you my wisdom Bible. It has 160 pages of my private notes. There it is. Anybody who becomes a monthly partner at any level, you may want to give 17000 a month. Or maybe not. Maybe you only want to give 10000 a month. That's a joke, folks, because not many people do that. <laughs> you may want to give $58 a month. But whatever you decide to sow every month, I want to give you the Wisdom Bible. An armor bearer is someone who walks beside you and guards you. They are a gatekeeper for you. Perfect. Gift of appreciation for new monthly partners. Good. An armor bearer is like an assistant. They travel around the world with you, go to town with you. An armor bearer is, Jonathan had one. He said something to Jonathan that was real big. He says, whatever your goal is, 
whatever your desire is, that's what's in my heart. He used the phrase in King James Version, whatever's in your heart is in my heart. He said, I will do exactly. That's, I don't, uh, I wonder if I have any armor bearers. I may have one or two. An armor bearer wants to follow you and carry out your goals, your dreams. They want to get what you want. You won't have many. But they're worth they're worth training and cultivating. I want to stop here. Partner time. Paul Chadwick said that's why I had to sell my childhood home and leave the environment. Stephanie Maria Barrett says, I loose myself from anxiety in Jesus' name. So be it. Levon Hawkins, Christina, Karen. Karen says, I love to hear you laugh. Well, I'll try to do it next time I can. Karen, <laughs> I'll try to laugh for just for you. Cindy Jones. Thank you, Cindy. Every one of those words, our hearts are secure. Wow. Cindy just wrote me, the problems you solve cannot be quantified. That's quite a statement. I want to remember that. Let me read this. Cindy Jones, quote, once again. This is from my book, Cindy, so I have your words. Once again, you speak truth and wisdom into our life. There is no moment wasted when you speak and we hear you. The problems you solve cannot be quantified. Around the world, our hearts are secure. End quote. Mm. Cindy, don't ever quit talking to me. Don't ever quit talking to me. Francis says, Dr. Mike, I've been following your teaching since the year 2000. One of the most remarkable things I learned from you was how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. It changed my life. Nigeria, just know that God's raised men through you who will keep the wisdom fire burning. I love that. I love that. Julie, you're not a burden whatsoever. Don't you quit sending out those scriptures. Nobody chooses the most appropriate scriptures like you do on Twitter. I use them. I take them and put them in my files. Julie, we love you, value you. We pray for you. That God's very best. Julie's a very, very much a Jesus lover. She's a Bible lover. Yes. She yes. probably loves the Bible as much as anybody I know. Johanna says, Apostle Joshua Selman from Nigeria mentions you frequently. Johanna, I need his address. Please email me, Dr. Mike at thewisdomcenter.tv. Please email me, Johanna. I want to know this man, Joshua Selman. Dr. Brown, yay, you made it. You made it. Apostle Sonia, I'll write this information down. Are you ready? Yes. Art of receiving. I preached four weeks on the art of receiving. Family, take that phrase seriously. If you don't have much, you have a master receiving. Receiving is the key to life. John 1, 11 or 12. He came into his own, his own received or not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Absalom wouldn't receive David, but Solomon, his son, received him. Mm. Vashti wouldn't receive the request of her husband. She got kicked out of the palace. Receive people's difference. Receive their request, receive their struggles, receive, receive their moments of agitation. Receive who they are, receive who they're not. There's people that just don't have it. Receive that, accept that, work with that. 
You may have a daughter or son who's got some personal problems. Re work with that. Receive that. I've got a baby sister who's got some serious, serious emotional struggles. Can't get a job anywhere. Nine policemen came to put her in jail because of she was so reactive in her neighborhood. She put three of them in a hospital for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Three of the nine police. She's rough. Wow. She's rough. But I have to receive her wounded. Receive her with the damage that she has. I have a relative that talks nonstop. Doesn't want to hear me say one word. He's a preacher. I learned, I learned to, to receive him. That's he, he didn't want to hear anything from me. He don't want anything I have to say. He's a preacher. I paid him a lot of money. I've given him a lot of money. He's a relative. But he doesn't want to hear anything from me. I receive that. I accept that. And I listen to him carefully and meticulously as long as possible. Receive who people are. Receive yourself who you're not. Receive who you are. Receive your own needs. Receive your own needs. You have a need for something. Receive that. Receive the you God made you to be. Receive that. Receive what you can't do. Try to learn. I paid a, I paid people a hundred dollars an hour for hours and hours. Try to teach me Spanish. I can't get it. I am positive that the Spanish tongue is built this way, not this way. <laughs> yeah. it's real. Never mind. Never mind. Receive, receive your own lack. What you don't have. You're not gifted. Work with that. But find someone who's gifted at that. Someone who's good at that. Hire them. Staff your weakness. Said that a few dozen times. Staff your weakness. Yvonne says, I am a monthly partner. And I can feel the respect, the friendship. Thanks. Love, sir. Nancy Newman says, quote, no minister ever taught me more about the Holy Spirit, end quote. Mm. The art of receiving. Achievers. When you see people who've accomplished a lot, read their books. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Nelson Mandela, Bill Clinton. Barack Obama, Donald Trump. You don't have to like everybody you learn from. That'll limit you. Asking. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. Ask for mercy. Ask. Today, there's a TV station that's given me Free time for years. Free time. I've helped them a lot. I called them today. And I thanked them. And I told them some things I wanted to do for them. And you know what they told me? The lady says, our owner, this is the TV station. Our owner said, to give you free airtime. Mm hmm as long as you wanted it, as long as you were alive, we're going to give wow. you free TV time. Wow. You know what that did to me? You have any idea how that affected me? When I ask them, is there anything I can do for you? We always think, think of asking being, give me this. Would you give me that? Would you give me this? Would you give me that? There's another side to asking. 
What can I do for you? Hmm. Is there anybody I can call for you? Is there anything you need me to? I know one of my former preachers got COVID some time ago. First thing I thought of is who could bring him some food. So I began to call restaurants through my staff and have them to bring him food every day. Food. Is there anything I can do? Ask him. It's another world. I had about 150 words to give you tonight, and I got about 10. <laughs> so much for me, huh? Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? What do you need? Ask the people you love. What are your greatest needs? What's your greatest worries? What's your greatest concerns? What's your greatest fears? What's your greatest desires? Had a preacher today tell me he would take this member of my staff if she comes to Florida. He would take her around and buy her food that day. Mm. What can I do for you? Is there anybody I could contact for you? What could I do for you? Become creative in the investment world for those you love. Wow. Jackie Pay, can you believe that? Can you believe that? They're giving mm -hmm. me free TV time. Free. Yay. As long as I live. That's what they said. They said, wow. our leader said to give you free time as long mm -hmm. as you live. Ezekiel, Apostle Joshua Selman, I want his address. I want to hear his voice on the phone. I want to talk to a man that speaks well of me. I want to know that man. I want to know that man. Success world. Look, look for people in pain to help. Look for people that are wounded. Listen close for the sound of sorrow. Listen, the wise, listen for the sound of sorrow. The wise, listen for the sound of pain. What can I do for you? I have a boy on my staff. Actually, he's a man. I have a man on my staff that tells me my phone's here. Call me anytime, day or night. You know what? He's the first person I'd call if I get sick. A few mornings ago, about 2.30, I was itching all over my body. I was crying out to God. And I didn't know if I could survive. I told Christy, I said, I'm going to have to go to a, to emergency room. I've been to emergency rooms 10 times in a row, 10 nights in a row. I said, I may have to go. And the first thing I thought of was this young man on my staff because he tells me, my phone is available, Dr. You know what? I believe it. Believable love is so rare. You just, it's so rare you just almost are speechless when somebody talks with you to believable love, with believable love. Believable love. Dr. Brown, thank you for the rescue scene. Thank you, thank you. For the two Mother's Day remembrance scene. You have no idea how your seeds talk to us. We talk here at my love circle about you. Seems like every time I have a special need, Dr. Brown is first to the plate. I'm here to walk mm -hmm. beside you. Yes. That's not yes. small. That's mm -hmm. not small. If you're a new monthly partner, I'd sure love to hear from you. Call the seed number at the top, 844-789. 7333. I'm going through a lot of changes. 
There's a company that has 22 numbers, phone numbers, that I have to pay for them. There's a company that has 22 phone numbers of mine, and I don't know what they're for. I don't know where they are at. I don't know who calls those numbers, but I'm trying to make a lot of decisions. If you want to pray for me, and I think you do, pray for God to calm my spirit, simplify my ministry, Ask the Lord to take away all anxiety. Ask God to give me peace to sleep at night. Ask the Lord to give me decision-making ability. I'm not the man I was five years ago, but I'm learning things I never knew. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting some wisdom, some wisdom things from the Lord for that. We'll show you how to give to our ministry. Then I'll show you, if you want to sow personally to me, I'll give you that opportunity if you'd like. First, we're going to show you on the screen ways to sow. You can screenshot this while Pastor Anna shares with us for a few moments. Be sure to take, oh, I forgot to go to the, the Western Union. Oh, my Lord. Forgot to go to Western Union. Put that down. You don't remind me, I can't think of everything. Here's the way to sow into our ministry as God directs you. I want you all to shout with me that I have some free air time. Yay. It's not a big area. It's just a small city area in a couple of states, but it's, it's free. Can't beat that. Mm. Can't beat that. Yes. Pastor Anna, talk to us. Dr. Murdoch, the testimony that you have of free airtime reminds me of the time you sowed the $1,000 seed. You broke the back of poverty and how God started to give you free airtime. Am I connecting it right, Dr. Murdoch? That's true. And how God from that $1,000 seed gave you 100,000 partners. Uh, through uh, free airtime, and the testimony keeps coming. I really believe in your founder circle, Dr. Murdoch. It's been really strong in my heart that this month there will be 25 people sowing a $1,000 seed. And I, I believe that this is a, a miracle month in the $1,000 seed, Dr. Murdoch. You know, I hadn't thought about that particularly until you just said it. But the founder circle is, is huge to me. There's an office down five minutes from my house. It's the perfect office. They wanted 9,500 a month, offered 8,000 a month. They came back and said they'd let me move into it for 8,500 a month, three years. They wanted three months advance. It's roughly 25,000. So we've been really asking the Lord for 25 who during the month of May would sow a $1,000 seed. Can't thank you enough. Your name will be on a plaque. I'd also love to have your picture. If you don't mind. I want the pictures of my founder circle. There's reasons. Those that are sowing a thousand dollars to help me get this, it'll hold probably, probably 50, at least fifteen people. Beautiful, laid out the best offices. I've spent so many hours looking for new offices. <laughs> me and Christina, I have a movie room over here, and it shows you know inter, uh, internet. Me and Christine have spent hours and hours. We've driven to try to find a place for the core group of my ministry. Pastor Anna is looking for a church home, a place where she can open the church up and have the church family. And she's got a church staff. And 
I'm looking for mine. And uh, these found their circles real big. I told Pastor Anna, I said, Pastor Anna, for 12 months, I'm going to give you 10000 a month for your new church family. And by the way, I love your title of our church family called Wisdom for a Winning Church. It don't get better Yay. than that. Don't get better than that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear from that preacher? He just messaged me, Dr. Murdoch, that he will have an answer this week. Still needs to meet with his board. Oh, I have. I've had a board like his. They may be my ex-people. Bless his heart. Good man, though. He's a good man. Free airtime. Lifetime favor. Lifetime income. Apostle Sonia, I don't know if you have a TV program, but you should. You've got something deep inside you. Can you believe that, Karen? Free airtime to spread the gospel. It's over about two states area. Cindy, I hope that's true. I hope every word you're saying there is true, that you're seeing it take place. I want that. I want that. If somebody wants to sow, I had a man today send me $1,000. Yay. I think he's in Minnesota. A man today sent me a personal gift for me of a thousand dollars. Wow. Pastor Anna, wipe that jealousy off your face, sister. I'm trying, sir. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> a man sent me a thousand dollars today. It may not be much to y'all, but a thousand's a lot. Yes. I can't thank you enough for standing with me and sowing in my personal life. Got a lot of testimonies about that. Taicha, yes. thank you. We're going to go to the Western Union. Taicha from Japan, my son in the Lord, just sent us a note that he, he sent another blessing to me. Father, I ask you for seven harvests to every seed being planted in the next 24 hours. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask you for the hundredfold return from Mark chapter 10. I ask you for the completion of healing according to Isaiah 58. Our health shall spring forth speedily. I ask you for financial favor for every seed. Lord, I'd like to ask you to do something in seven days from seeds. I don't know why. I have seven-day faith right now. I ask you, seven's the number of completion. 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 Father, I ask you for a seven-day turnaround. Every seed that's been planted, I ask you for a seven-day harvest. Swift, quick, extraordinary, and a surprise in Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Dr. Murdoch, yes. one of the most exciting things you've taught me is to sow a faith promise. This weekend, when you were talking about the founder circle, I jumped and I said, I want to sow my thousand, and I did not have it. And the moment I said it, Dr. Murdoch, I received my first 200, and I was able to sow it. And then the next day, I received my next 200, and I was able to sow it. And yesterday I received 112. And I'm going to sow it tonight. And Dr. Murdoch, I love how you taught us to call in seed before we can call in a harvest. And I just really invite everybody yes. that goes through yes. fear, that goes yeah. through that obstacle, that you don't have it and you wish you sowed it. I would sow a faith promise today for the $1,000 seed. And watch what God will do. His reaction is exciting. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor Anna, as you know, I'm going to downloads on my books. The day will come probably in a year or maybe less, six months. 
that you won't be able to get their paperback books. But I have 289 one-minute pocket Bible for men. I have 289 left. When they're gone, they're gone. 101 topics. Loneliness, leadership, love, loyalty, lying, mentorship, miracles. I took the 101 greatest topics I knew and I put them in a one-minute pocket Bible for men to carry in their pocket. There's 289 left. Anybody that would like one of these for just $5, I'll, I'll uh, pay the shipping. But if you would like to buy 10 of these, they're $5 for one. It's book 60. That's the that's the number of it, book 60. Five dollars each. But if you want 10 of these to give to men in your business, men around you, it's called the One Minute Pocket Bible for Men. If you want 10 of them, you can have them 10 for $20. 10 of these for $20. Call the number on the screen. We'll go back to the beginning. Please call by 7 o'clock tonight if you can. 45 more minutes. My staff will be there. 844-789-SEED. $5 for one. 10 for $20. It's book 60. It's a, you could give this gift for the rest of your life. You can give it for birthdays, anniversaries. You can give it to just showing someone you like them. Right on the inside, present it to them. This is out of this world. You have 289 left. This may be the last day I can offer it. Maybe. Make a note of that. Call the book number up there. 817-759-BOOK. one for $5, I'll pay the shipping handle. 101, it's a fabulous gift to give, give away. If you want 10, 10 for 20. When they're gone, they're gone. Take advantage of it. Praise God. Pastor John, Canada, I want to talk to him. I want to talk to him. Put that down. Pastor Anna, before we... Dr. Murdoch? Yes. Just a thought. Uh, just to think about it for June. I don't think we've done this before, but instead of celebrating you for Father's Day one day, I wish we could do Father's Month. I don't think Ta -da. we've done that before. I hear God talking. <laughs> I hear God talking. Ah, I hadn't thought about, oh, that that makes me special for a whole month. That would, that's kind of nice. Father's Month? If it, is it in June? Yeah. It's in June. Father's Day is in yes, June. Yes, Dr. Murdoch next month. Folks, did you hear that? I receive. Thank yeah. you. I don't take that lightly, Pastor Anna. That would be fabulous to have a Father's Month. Wouldn't that yes. be good? Every time you do Father Talk, Dr. Murdoch, he's so, so powerful. I just felt June would be amazing if it would be our spiritual Father's Month. I love that. That's precious. Well, I wish I'd have done that to my spiritual fathers. I wish I'd have done that. I missed it a lot. That would be, boy, that makes me want to teach on it. If you were my son and if you Yay. were my daughter, that makes me want to speak on that during, during Father's Day, Mom, June. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Praise God. I will let you go, family. Thank you for sticking with me. Didn't know we'd be live tonight. Didn't know I'd be live here on Monday, May the 9th, live right here at my house. Thank you all so much. Miss, Miss Sonia will probably run a little special video. I think Pastor Tim Walker is 
going to help me make some videos. Anxious to see. He's quite a producer. And uh, we'll have some new videos. But right now, family, look at this again. Book 60, the one-minute pocket Bible for men. 101 topics and scriptures on every one of those topics. You just can't already beat this. You just can't already beat this. And if you want 10 copies, that's 10 for $2 each. You can't even print this book like that. But it's just a way to help you in your gift giving. Greatest book on earth to give. It's the greatest gift on earth is a book. God showed us that. God bless you, Pastor Anna. And he's going to call you next week, huh? Yes, doc this week, Dr. Murdoch. Yeah. He said this I week. I started to call. Tried to call his assistant to see if we could, because the church family needs, they don't need to be waiting too long. Yes, sir. Of course, we'll be at the Wisdom Center for several more weeks, but uh, we'd, we'd like to have a place to start planning. Start yes. planning. Frank Champion, Paul Chadwick, Natalie, Frank, I receive those words. And Paul, you're so consistent in your loyalty. That's big to me. That's big to me. Good night, beautiful Pastor Anna. Thank nobody you, I know, Brad. nobody believes you're a pastor to be that good looking. But you are. <laughs> we'll run Thank the video. You, good night. And the blessings of Hi. the Lord be on you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Precious family, I'm so glad you joined us today for the wisdom world of Mike Murdoch. I have a great pack to present to you that you're going to love. Dr. Murdoch says, if you want to become a millionaire, invest in your mind. These seven books will make you succeed beyond your wildest dreams. The Law of Recognition, Secrets of the Richest Man Who Ever Lived, Seven decisions that will decide your financial wealth. Ten lies many people believe about money. Thirty-one reasons people do not receive their financial harvest. Thirty-one secrets for career success. Seven laws you must honor to have uncommon success. Money Seven Pack. Family, order your copy today. The code number is 538-PACK, 538-PACK. And guess what? It's only $29. Can you believe that? Don't miss this great opportunity. For those of you that live around the world, we are not able to ship books outside of the United States, but we do have a wonderful option for you. Please visit our website, thewisdomcenter.tv button eight section one and you can download your copy today of money seven pack you will love this opportunity please write dr murdoch the p.o box on the screen is for those of you that are sending your testimonies your words they matter to him more than you can imagine please write them today god bless you and thank you for being a part of this love family